<coughs> excuse me, simply to help them determine whether or not you can be a fair, impartial, unbiased juror that will listen to the evidence presented in this case and be able to render a verdict. That's the simple process that we're engaging in. And how that occurs, and how it's going to work today, is first the state's going to ask questions, and then the defense is going to ask questions here in this room. And then based on your answers, you may be called into the courtroom a little bit later to follow up on some of your answers. Very simple process. Now, as we've moved through this process, I haven't heard a lot of questions uh, that uh, have have challenged the jury. When I say that, what I mean is that uh, they're not asking a lot of overly personal information that would be uh, uncomfortable to respond to. But if for some reason you are asked a question, you feel uncomfortable responding to the question in front of the group or, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice this morning, in front of the group or in any other way, just let me know and we'll figure out a way to make sure that we get your responses on the record. Really what we're looking for is just for you to volunteer as much information as you can so that we can work through this process with <coughs> you. During jury selection, you're gonna be referred to by the number on your chest, okay? It's a very impersonal way of addressing people, but we do that for a couple reasons. First, is sitting over here to my left is a court reporter. All right. The court reporter and I need to hear everything that you're saying and importantly at some point in the future we may have to go back into the transcript to figure out who was talking and the easier way to do that is by referring to the jurors by number. <coughs> also uh, we are in this case in particular but generally uh, we do want to make sure the jurors are comfortable volunteering information and it be a sort of anonymous process. All right, so we're not using names we're also not televising any pictures. Uh, we're not pushing out any information about jurors or doing everything we can to make sure we don't do that. Again, to make sure that you're as comfortable as process, or as comfortable as possible during the process, and that you're comfortable volunteering information. Okay. Now, this room hasn't been too bad, but I do ask that everybody speak up during jury selection. We want to make sure that we can hear you. We don't have microphones really out there on you. Uh, so, uh, if I ask you to speak up, I apologize in advance. Uh, we'll go ahead, or I might interrupt you, uh, and if I do so, uh, uh, it's only because the acoustics in here are, are sort of good but not great. As to the length of the process, this is going to take all of the day. Okay? I do ask for your patience. Now, I thanked you up front, now I'm going to ask for your patience. What's going to occur is these general questions have normally been going on in a little over an hour or so, and then we'll break into this individual voir dire, and that could take some time. We don't rush anything in Superior Court. There's a very deliberate process that you are now involved in with us. And again, that may take a little bit of time. I'll do what I can to make sure you're aware of what that timing is. But again, based on what happened uh, the last couple days in jury selection, I expect this to take most of the day. So with that, I'm not going to go into a big long lecture about civics and jury service, but again, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for participating in this process with us and for joining us today. I'm going to swear you in. I'm going to ask you a few uh, questions and then we'll get right into the questioning by the attorneys. So if I could please have you stand and raise your right hand. You shall give true answers to all questions as may be asked by the court or its authority, including all questions asked by the parties or their attorneys concerning your qualifications as jurors in the case of the state of Georgia versus Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, and William R. Bryant. This is by the court. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the case of the state of Georgia versus Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, and William R. Bryan. You are charged, each individually and as parties concerned in the commission of a crime by the grand jury of Glynn County with the offenses of murder, felony murder in four counts, aggravated assault in two counts, false imprisonment, and criminal attempt to commit a felony. Please respond to the following questions. 
Are any members of this panel related by blood or marriage to Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, Will, excuse me, William R. Bryan, or Ahmad Arbery? 408. Have you for any reason, this is to the entire group, have you for any reason formed and expressed any opinion in regard to the guilt or innocence of the accused? Please raise your hand if you believe you have. God. I can't see that number all the way down. 377? 379? Sir, so was your hand up? If you keep your hands up so I can. Okay, 377. And then, ma'am, you are 380, 392. Mm -hmm. 397. 397. All right, thank you. I think I got everybody. Have you any prejudice or bias resting on your mind, either for or against the accused? If so, please raise your hand. Thank you. And then finally from the court, and again, I'll ask this in reverse. Please raise your hand if your mind is not perfectly impartial between the state and the accused. And 377. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those are all of the questions to be posed by the court. Is the state ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Linda Donikoski. I, along with Paul Camarillo and Larissa Olivier, represent the state of Georgia. We are the district attorneys pro tempore assigned to this case. Do any of you think you know us? No hands. Is there anyone here who does not currently reside in Glen County? No hands. Is there anyone here under the age of 18 years? No hands. Is there anyone here who has been convicted of a felony and not had your rights restored? No hands. Is there anyone here who sat on the grand jury that returned this indictment, in this case, in June of 2020? No cards. Is there anyone here who is a post-certified law enforcement officer, meaning you have arrest powers either uh, locally or federally? No hands.
No opinions, no cards, or no hands. Is there anybody here who's going to be, un is there anybody here who will be unable to give the state a fair trial because the assistant district attorneys are not from here? We're from the Cobb County District Attorney's Office. Does anyone have an opinion or would you be unable to give the state a fair trial because of that fact? No hands. Now, is there anybody here who's related by blood or marriage to Waycock, Waycross Judicial Circuit District Attorney George Barnhill or any of his assistant district attorneys in Waycross? Does anybody know George Barnhill Sr., the elected in Waycross? No cards. Does anyone here know George Barnhill Jr.? He was a former assistant district attorney here in the Brunswick Judicial Circuit uh, who's now in private practice here in Brunswick. Does anyone know George Barnhill Jr.? No cards. Does anyone know Atlantic Judicial Circuit District Attorney Tom Durden or any of his assistant district attorneys? No cards. All right, so I'm going to now direct you to Mr. Robert Rubin and Mr. Jason Sheffield. Does anyone believe that they know these gentlemen? No cards. Does anyone here know Frank Hogue or Laura Hogue? No cards. Is there anyone here who's related by blood or marriage to Mr. Kevin Goff? Does anyone know Mr. Goff? And that's 392. And is there anyone here who knows of Mr. Goff due to the <coughs> fact that you've been represented by him or he represented somebody in your family or you know him via reputation because of the work he's done here? No cards. Does anyone here personally know Travis McMichael? No cards. Does anyone here personally know Greg McMichael? No cards. Does anyone here know Mr. William? He goes by the nickname Roddy Bryan. That's 383. Does anyone here know Ahmad Arbery? Did you know him personally? And of course, we've got 411 and 408. Is there anyone here who knew or knows Mr. Arbery's mother, Wanda Cooper Jones? 408, 411. Marcus Arbery Sr., Mr. Ahmad Arbery's father, 408, 411. And Marcus Arbery Jr., his brother, 411, 408. Is there anyone here who knows Miss Amy Elrod? 383. Is there anyone here who knows Mr. Greg McMichael's wife, Lee McMichael? 402. Is there anyone here who knows Lindsay McMichael, Travis McMichael's sister? Lindsay McMichael. No cards. Is there anyone here who knows Judge Walmsley? No cards. All right. We're going to focus on jury service for a minute. Is there anybody here who has gone through the entire jury service process? And what I mean by that is you did this voir dire, you know, where we go ahead and ask you questions. You were actually selected to be on the jury. You listened to the entire case, whether it's civil or criminal, and you went back in the room with 11 other people and deliberated to come to a verdict. Is there anybody who has had that experience? 377 and 380, 383, and 415. All right, so out of the four of you, was anyone the four person on the jury? And out of the four of you, without going into what the verdict was, was your jury able to reach a verdict? If not, raise your card. So your jury was able to reach a verdict. All right, that's juror 380. Everyone else reached a verdict, 383. 377, you reached a verdict. 415, you reached a verdict. 
No verdict was reached? Ah, did everyone hear that? They settled. Okay. Thank you, 415. Has anyone ever sat on a grand jury before? That's different than where you go and deliberate with other 11 other people, but the grand jury, 395. Now, when you were summoned for jury duty, um, you were directed kind of to a website that gave you a whole bunch of information there. There were some other documents there, and I'm not talking necessarily about COVID documents or court process and procedures. There were some, unfortunately, some documents that were actually related to this case, like legal pre you know, pleadings and stuff like that. It's okay if you looked at them. We just want to know if you looked at them because they were available on the website. Is there anyone here who looked at those documents um, and perused them or read any of the legal pleadings in this case? 377. Please raise your hand um, if you served in the military. No cards. Please raise your hand if you have prior law enforcement experience. Previously you've been post certified or some other prior law enforcement experience. 381. Including federal, correct? Correct. Any sort of law enforcement experience. Please raise your card if you have a close personal friend or family member. I don't mean Uncle Bob in Iowa that you haven't seen in 10 years. I'm talking somebody you talk with on a regular basis, close family member, close personal friend, who has previous law enforcement experience or is currently a law enforcement officer. So we have 377, 379, 380, 381, 3, and 397, 411, and 415. 392, 397, 411, and 415. Did I miss anyone? Okay. Please raise your card or your hand if you have experience in the field of social work. You've been a social worker or you've done that kind of work before. No cards, no hands. Please raise your hand if you have work experience or educational experience in the field of counseling, psychology, psychiatry, your undergrad degree was psychology, you've been a therapist or a counselor along those lines. No hands. Please raise your card if, or hand if you have experience in the legal field. And that can mean you are a lawyer. It can mean you're a paralegal. It can mean you're an administrative assistant. You have taken classes, undergrad, and criminal justice, something along those lines where you have the legal field experience. 392? So this is a little different. Please raise your hand if you have experience in the criminal justice field. And that can mean you worked in probation. It could mean you ministered at a prison. It can mean you offered counseling or you did something administrative. Any sort of work experience within the criminal justice system. 381. Please raise your card if you are related to or have a close personal friend who works in a district attorney's office, and that can be anywhere in the United States. No cards. Is there anyone here who has medical training? I, I don't mean you took a CPR class or you were a lifeguard, you know, when you were in college. I'm talking about you have actual medical training as part of your job or some sort of background. 402 and 414. Is there anyone here related by blood or marriage to a criminal defense attorney? No hands. Does anyone here personally know someone who is an attorney, either an assistant district attorney or a criminal defense attorney, that you personally know that person? They're in the criminal justice system as a lawyer. 392. Is there anyone here who's had a bad experience with law enforcement such that it sticks out in your mind? No cards. Is there anyone here who had a good experience with law enforcement such that it sticks out in your mind? No cards. Anyone here have a bad experience with a prosecutor? Anyone have a good experience with a prosecutor? 
Anyone here ever have a bad experience with a criminal defense attorney? Anyone have a good experience with a criminal defense attorney? No hands. All right, so we're going to talk about arrests and convictions now. So arrests and convictions. Please raise your card if you have ever been arrested and or convicted for something like a DUI to something more serious. So I'm not talking about traffic tickets. I'm not talking about auto accidents. I'm talking about you've been arrested and or convicted of DUI to something more serious. That is 380, 379, and 395. In 402, did I miss anyone else? And 390. So I have 379, 380, 392 and 402. No, wait, I said it's 395, not 392. I apologize. I got that wrong. There we go. Now, this applies to your close personal friends and close relatives. Have any of them had a DUI to something more serious where they were arrested and or convicted of that charge? 379. 397, 402, 396, 411, and 414. 386, and 390. Please raise your card if you have ever been falsely accused of a crime, whether it involved the police or not. 396, 411. Please raise your hand if you have a close personal friend or close relative who you feel has been falsely accused of a crime, whether it involved the police or not. No, no hands. All right, so what we're going to do is talk about being the victim of a crime. Okay, so this is not convictions, this is not being a victim of a crime. Please raise your hand or your card if you have been the victim of a violent crime or a crime against your person. And a crime against your person could be whatever you think it is. It could be someone snatched your purse out of your hand, that kind of thing. So a crime against your person or a violent crime. Anyone here been the victim of that? We have 395, 396, 386, 402, 403, 409, and 415. Once again, we're going to have this apply to your close friends and close relatives. Anyone here, <coughs> a close friend, close relative, who's been the victim of a violent crime or a crime against their person? Talk about relatives, close friends. 386. 396, no, oh, sorry, 402, 408. Has anyone here ever witnessed a violent crime in progress? 381, 411. Has anyone here ever taken cell phone video of a crime in progress, any kind of crime? No hands. All right, so now we're going to talk about burglaries and home invasions. Burglaries is you come home from work and your door is open and your stuff's gone. Okay? Home invasion is you are home and someone breaks into your house by kicking the door down or you wake up and they're standing over you. So those are the two different things we're talking about. Have you ever been the victim of a burglary or a home invasion? So we have 380. 383, 386, 402, and 414. Once again, oh, 415, 415, thank you, sir, 415. So once again, burglary, home invasion, close family member, personal friend. 
Does that apply to anyone you know who's been the victim of a burglary or home invasion? 379, 402, anyone else? Okay. Please raise your hand, and this applies to everything. If you, close relative, close family member, <coughs> friend, um, has ever had a handgun, a rifle, or a shotgun stolen out of your car, 402. Is there anyone? Oh, and 415? I've never stolen out of my house. I'm a car. All right. Thank you, sir. 415. Did everyone hear that? It was stolen out of his house, not his car. I've had one taken out of the house. 383. And 380. All right. Has anyone here ever had to call 911 or you voluntarily called 911 about a crime? I'm not talking about medical emergencies or, you know, a child has fallen off a swing set, broken an arm. I'm talking about there's a crime. You see a drunk driver, crime in progress, you've called 911. 402? Anyone else? And 403. Is there anyone? Is there anyone here who has had to give a statement to law enforcement? I'm not talking by the side of the road during the fender bender. So no, no, I'm not talking traffic accidents. I'm talking you've actually gone down and given a statement to law enforcement or had to come to your house. 386 and 402, 396. Is there anyone who's ever had to be a witness at 415? Is there anyone here who's ever been a witness at trial, meaning you were in the courtroom, you were in the witness box, you raised your hand, and you gave testimony, whether it was civil or criminal. You've been a witness at trial. 396, 397, and 381. 415. Please raise your hand if you have taken it upon yourself to go ahead and investigate a crime. No cards. Does anybody know a friend or family member who's taken it upon themselves to go and investigate a crime? No hands. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Look around at each other. Does anybody recognize any other jurors that are here today? No hands. Now, you guys were at Selden Park last Monday. When you were there, did you recognize anybody else who you personally knew? 377. 379, 381, 395, 402, 408, 409. Everybody. Please raise your card if you or anyone in your household owns a handgun, a rifle, or a shotgun. 377, 379, is there anyone here who's ever had to carry a firearm or rifle, shotgun, any sort of weapon like that as part of their job? 381. Is there anyone here who has non-military, non-law enforcement firearms training? Mm -hmm. 
meaning you went and took a class. 383, 392, 386, 402, 396, and 414. Please raise your hand if you've lived in the Glen County area less than five years. 379-386-403-411. Does anyone here currently reside in the Satilla Shores neighborhood? Is there anyone here who previously resided in the Satilla Shores neighborhood? Is anyone here especially familiar with the Satilla Shores neighborhood due to friends or family members who reside there now or previously resided there? No hands to any of those questions. Is there anyone here who currently resides in the Royal Oaks neighborhood? Is there anyone here who previously resided in Royal Oaks? Is there anyone especially familiar with Royal Oaks because you have friends or family members who live there? We have 409, 415, that appears to be it. Now, there's across Highway 17, we have Fancy Bluff, the Fancy Bluff neighborhood where there's the Boykin Ridge Drive. Is there anybody here who lives in Fancy Bluff? Anyone here who previously resided within Fancy Bluff? <laughs> Is there anyone here especially familiar with the Fancy Bluff neighborhood or Boykin Ridge Drive? 409. All right, so my next set of questions are about the ability to deliberate. Is there anyone here who has a religious, moral, or ethical conviction that would keep you from passing judgment on another person? And what I mean by that is, we decide you're the perfect juror and you make it onto the jury and you listen to all the evidence and you go in the back to deliberate and you are never going to reach a verdict. You're never going to come back with guilty or not guilty because that's the only thing you're going to do is guilty or not guilty. But you yourself, because of a religious, ethical, or moral conviction, are just not going to be able to render any sort of verdict or pass judgment. Is there anyone here that that applies to? No hands. Is there anyone here with a private reason? Oh. Sorry. 390, thank you. And is there anyone here with a private reason? You know, that they would not be able to deliberate, they would not be able to pass judgment or render a verdict in this case. 390. So this is a reverse question. Is there anyone here who does not belong to any groups or organizations? And what I mean by that is you don't go to church, synagogue, mosque. You do not belong to a bowling league, a bridge club. You're not a member of a book club. You're not a member of any professional association that is part of what you do for a living. You just don't belong to any sort of fraternal, social, religious, or political group at all. Is there anybody here who, that belong, who falls into that category? All right, so we have... 392, 396, 402, 403, 409. All right, so we're going to talk about arrests and the criminal justice system. Please raise your hand. Oh, I have 416. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you, a relative, or a close friend has ever been arrested and the circumstances of that arrest were such that you thought that your friend, your loved one, was treated unfairly by either the police or the criminal justice system. <coughs> no hands. Please raise your hand if you, a relative, or a close friend has ever been arrested for kidnapping or false imprisonment. No hands. 
Please raise your hand if you, a relative or a close friend, has ever been arrested for shooting someone, whether they lived or not, just shooting somebody. No hands. Please raise your hand if a relative or a close friend has ever been arrested for murder. 397. Anyone else? <coughs> and 380. Is there anyone here who feels that they will not be able to follow the law? Judge Wamsley is the one who provides the jury with the law. Is there anyone here who feels they will not be able to follow the law even if they, you know, they disagree with it? So you might disagree with the law. You're still taking it out to follow it. Is there anybody here who feels they're not going to be able to follow the law? No hands. Is there anyone here who wants to serve on this jury? And that's 396. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I talk really fast. And as you sat here, you were probably thinking, you know, Linda, about four questions ago, I should have raised my card, and I didn't. Is there anybody here who wants to let us know that they should have raised their card to a question, but I passed you by and didn't get you? Yes, 395. What do I need to put? Marcus, and when I went to school, they called him Marcus Avery. Right. But it, years later, I found out it was Arby, so I do know the father. He was a couple of years later. Thank you, 395. <laughs> and then 403. The medical training. Medical training. Thank you, 403. And 415. So you know Greg McMichael, right, but coming into your business location. And of course, 390. Um, shooting, All right, so at this point, Your Honor, um, Juror 390 is, this is for the record, is accompanied by a person younger than Juror 390. Um, who I believe is addressing the court at this point in time. Um, so without saying your name, what's your relationship to Juror 390? My mother. That is, it's your mother? Yes, my mother. All right. And you want to... Let me ask just a couple of questions. Thank you, Judge. Is there a language issue then? Yes, she doesn't speak English. Okay. Uh, what is, what's her first language? Spanish. Okay. And when you say she doesn't speak English, does that mean not at all? 90% she doesn't understand. Okay. And so you or somebody else has to interpret for her no matter where All she goes? All the time, yes. Okay. Thank you. And so she does know of someone who has been the victim of a shooting or who has been arrested for shooting? Um, shooting, but he um, uh, suicide himself ah. too. Um, that's the reason. Okay, thank you very much. And then we have, I'm going to go take, I'm going to take 408 first. 408, please. Um, you said something about the DUI, a relative. I, I, I don't know. DUI, for a relative. Thank you, 408. And 381. Medical training. Thank you, 381. And uh, the social group. The social. You're not part of any groups? 383. Do you have a relative? And is there anyone else I missed? All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do one last thing. It's going to take a minute. I'm going to read you a list of potential witnesses in this case. I'm going to try and do it slowly, but we need to kind of move on. So if you think you recognize that name, you think you know that person personally, um, no matter what the relationship is, raise your card. And if I keep going, yell at me. Yeah, okay, literally go, you know, 392, yell out your number for us, okay? So first off, I'm going to start off with some Glen County police officers. So if anybody recognizes or knows these Glen County police officers, 
please raise your card. William Duggan, Sheila Ramos, Chris Lowther, Ricky Shane Minshew, Jeffrey Brandenberry, Parker Marcy, Guy Brad Butler, Caitlin Roberts Phillips, Roger, Caitlin Roberts Phillips. Did you say Brad Butler? Brad Butler. All right, 381. Brad Butler. So I think I was on Caitlin Roberts Phillips, Detective Roderick Nohilly, Stephen Lowry, Brandon Gregory, Diana Bibby, Sherry Bachelor, 392, Christopher Hatcher, Robert Rash, Officers Powers, Officer Stansberry, Officer Owens, Officer Adam Jackson, Glen County Sheriff's Office, Sir Stephanie Herndon Britt, All right, so now we're going to talk about some of the people with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation has two parts. They have special agents and then they have the crime lab. So we're going to do special agents first. So first off, oops, does anyone know GBI agent Jason Seacrest? Jessica Hamilton. Matthew Heath. Lawrence Kelly. Richard Dial, Brian Smith, Garrett Morton, Amanda Barker. All right, when it comes to the crime lab, does anyone know Amanda Cook, James Jim Gordon, Jesse Worley, Ann Kistler Rao, Brian Leopard, or Dr. Edmund? Donahue. I'm now going to read you some names to see if you recognize any of the following people. Joe Mandela. Matthew Albenzi. John Ronald Olson, who goes by Ronnie Olson. Diego Perez and his wife Brooke Perez. 911 Center for Glen County Police, Kara Richardson or Jamie Dunwoody. Larry English or his wife Amy English. Miss Kelly Parr or her father Randall Parr. Mr. Daniel Alcott, his wife Christine Alcott or Miss Judith Alcott. Kim Ballesteros. Carol Flowers, Lauren Bennett, Linda Randall, Ashley Wittenberg, Daniel Stoddard, Cynthia Drummond. James Trimmings, Caitlin Miles, Cody Johannes, Derek Thomas, GBI analyst Jennifer Woodward, Hillary Lauren Brady Germano, Josh McGowan, Kyle Meissner, Nicole Lee Joyner, Rusty Russ Wayne Johnson, Zach Langford, and Glen County Police Officer Ronald Cooper. <coughs> Ms. Heaven Bryan, Peyton Thompson, you know Peyton? 383? Do we yeah. have to know them? 
personally or no other than See, this is where you are on the side of caution. Yep. 392. Also for who? Kevin Ryan. Oh. Anyone else? Does anyone here also know Annabelle Beasley or Subi Lawrence? 383. Both of those ladies? Uh, Subi. Does anyone know Joseph Allen Bartlett, Christy Barber? No hands. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Sheffield. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody holding up okay? Yeah. Been going on for about an hour. But about 20 more minutes left before I'll be done, and then the court will give us further instructions. Um, <clears throat> we are very eager to be here this morning. We're very happy to hear from you. And so I want to also thank you on behalf of all of Defense Counsel and the lawyers at the table for your honesty and your open answers that you're giving us. The word pry comes to mind, that we're prying but honestly, we're just trying to get to know your thoughts and your beliefs and your opinions. So let me begin by asking, now that you've sat here for a while, do any of you recognize, again, Travis McMichael, formerly in the Coast Guard, formerly employed, working for Metson Marine? Does that make a difference in terms of how you might know? Okay. okay. Yes, we do have one. Sir, your number again? 415. All right, Mr. Greg, you sat here for a bit. 415. And Roddy Bryan. You're welcome to come around if you can't see back there. Roddy Bryan, we have hands 383 and 395 and 415. Perfect. Thank you. Any of you, now that you've seen what's playing out in the media or what may be talked about in the community, have any of you developed a negative feeling about Travis McMichael? Raise your hand if you've developed a negative feeling about Travis McMichael. We'll drill down on what that might be later, but just if you feel like it suits you, 377. 392, 395, 397, thank you. Anybody over here? Okay, very good. Now about Mr. Greg McMichael. Same question, just if you have developed a negative feeling about Mr. Greg McMichael. 377, 392, okay, 397. Very good, thank you. And then also about Mr. Roddy Bryan. A negative feeling about Mr. Roddy Bryan. 377, 392, 397. Thank you. How about negative thoughts or feelings about criminal defense lawyers? You might think certain things about criminal defense lawyers, those who represent people who are accused of, of crimes. If you have a negative thought or feeling about us, let us know. We'd like to hear about that. No hands. Good, thank you. Please raise your hand if you have no firearms in your home. No firearms in your home whatsoever. All right, three, nine, five. Nine six four zero three four one four, and all the way in the back, sir. Your number again? Four one six. Oh, and we have three nine as well. Thank you. 
Please raise your hand if you have ever voted for or supported a political candidate based upon that candidate's position to limit gun rights, to reduce the types of guns or to limit gun rights in any way. Please raise your hand if you have supported that type of political candidate. No one. Please raise your hand if you oppose the laws that allow people to carry firearms, whether openly or concealed, out into the public. Restaurants, wherever, is a public place. 390. No one else. Now, there's been a lot of demonstrations and marches and gatherings here locally and elsewhere in the state, please raise your hand if you participated in any of these demonstrations or marches. Pursuant to the social justice movement, before or after the shooting and death in this case. In any way whatsoever, 403, 414. Please raise you know, your, yes sir? For that last one. All right, participating in social justice marches or whatnot. 381 also. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you have supported in any way the Black Lives Matter movement. Whether that is a financial support or a bumper sticker or a yard posting or whatever that is, any kind of support for the Black Lives Matter movement that's been happening locally or in our country. Right, so 397, 403, 411, 414. Okay, very good, thank you. Please raise your hand if you feel that you have ever been denied any opportunity because of your ethnicity or your race. You just feel that I didn't get this because of where I come from or the color of my skin. Yes, sir, 380. No one else. Hmm? Oh, 390. For some reason, I keep forgetting to look all the way back over there. She doesn't hear me where she was, so I That's okay. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. All right, now raise your hand if you feel you've been falsely accused of doing something wrong. It doesn't have to be something that led to an arrest but just that you've been falsely accused or suspected of doing something wrong based on your race or ethnicity. Four eleven. Thank you. And three ninety. I'm pausing now for three ninety because I know it's coming with the translation. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, do you agree with this statement? Raise your hand if you do. The old Georgia state flag, the one that was in existence from 1956 until 2002, is a racist symbol. The one that was removed from circulation in 2002, I feel that was a racist symbol. No, thank you. Please raise your hand if you agree with this statement. People of color, are not treated fairly in the criminal justice system. However broad you want to interpret that, that they are not treated fairly in the criminal justice system. 379, 380, 386, 395, 397. Now there's a glare on it, 403, thank you and no one else. Very good. Shifting to the subject of police officers. Not all police officers, but if you feel that the police in general do not treat equally black and white people. 
that the police, whether that's locally, abroad, or you know, throughout the country, the police generally do not treat black and white people the same. 380, 386, 395, 392, 397, 403, 411. Thank you. If you had any experiences with psychologists or psychiatrists or just have the general opinion that people in the psychological field can find mental illness with just about anybody, sort of a comment on the way that people get diagnosed these days with things. They just will find a mental illness for anybody. 379, 396. Thank you. I'm waiting. <laughs> OK, nothing back there. The word hardship has been used here um, this morning. What I want to do is make sure that we understand whether or not you have anything going on at home or in your professional life that is so difficult or strenuous or consuming that it will consume your thoughts while you're sitting in a trial where we need to have your full attention at all times. So if you have anything going on at work or at home that could impair, impair your ability to give your full attention, <clears throat> and this is a trial that we expect will last a couple of weeks, if not maybe three. So you need to think kind of long term about that, if you will, please. Yes, ma'am, 383. 392, your number again please, 377, 390, 397, 408, 411, <clears throat> very good, thank you. Also on the subject of paying attention having your full attention during a trial. We will take breaks, but if you have a mental, physical, visual, auditory hearing issue, anything that you feel or fear will impair your ability to stay focused during the trial and goes beyond the general breaks that we'll take. It be a morning break, a lunch break, an afternoon break. And you're concerned that that could impair your ability to pay attention during the trial, then we'd like you to raise your card. Okay? 390, 397, and 416. Very good. And lastly, is anyone here concerned that their verdict, whatever that verdict may be, could in some way affect them after this trial when they are back in the community, at home, at church, with friends, or with professional associations, that your verdict will cause you concern or problem. Four oh two. There you go. That's all I have. Thank you, Judge. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to take a recess. <clears throat> During the recess, I'm going to ask that y'all go ahead and take a step out of the jury assembly room, and then we're going to bring you back in here uh, in about 10 minutes or so. So during this recess, and really from this point forward, I'm going to give you some instructions. Do not discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anybody else. <coughs> Don't let anybody discuss this case with you. Don't go looking for any information about the case. If somebody approaches you about the case, please notify the court and we'll go ahead and address that. Essentially what I'm saying is, from this point forward, don't call your spouse or your friends or your family and start talking about the jury selection process or the case itself. 
There's new or there's uh, media out there that are covering this. Don't get on your phone and start checking your feed and looking for reports about what's going on. And again, if somebody's interested in the case and wants to talk to you about it, even in this panel, do not engage in any discussion until you are further instructed by the court. During this recess, make sure you grab your personal belongings. Again, we'll take about 10 minutes, and then what we're going to be doing is shifting into the courtroom. And as I said, we're probably going to be calling a number of you in one at a time to follow up on some questions. The process takes a little bit of time. So again, I do ask for your patience. And we'll see you all in a little bit. Thank you.